This is May's book two, chapter nine, part four. And I just wanted to remind you that if you do like this story, then uh, you can go to Amazon and you can type in my name, Katia Mills, and you can find this book, May's, in my publications. Okay. There was a man heavy of stature who began to follow her. His gait was unsteady and he appeared to be liquored up. He was a strong man, so he was narrowing the distance between them with ease. She pulled her hoodie over her head and walked faster. Did he know? She couldn't run without implicating herself, but if she did not, he would soon catch up with her. There was still no sign of any of her uncles as she passed the cemetery and state house. No sign of any life at all as she passed the school and the park. She could hear the man closer grunting, pulling a club foot behind him, dragging it against the earth. She ducked into the church, whose doors were not locked, and made her way up the stairs on one side leading up to the second floor. There were candles on sconces lighting her way, and the draft coming through the old building had the shadows pushing around, which made it easy for hiding. She found a spot beneath a heavy table covered by a cloth, and got herself into a tight ball in the dark there and waited. She heard the door she had come through open and the man ascending the stairwell with his club foot knocking behind him. He seemed to know just where she was and grabbed her when she tried to dart out from under the table and passed him. She began to fight and claw at him, but he was unaffected and came close to her saying, easy now, easy. She was no match for him, his size, but did not stop trying to free herself, first by ducking out of her hood, and then, when he had her by the arm, she turned and turned her body in hopes to free herself. Easy, woman, easy, he repeated again and again with his breath hot and stinking of meat and rum. Let go of me, please, she howled, but things only became more difficult the more she fought him. Still, she didn't stop until she heard him say, You're looking for someone, eh? Maybe I know where to find them. Then she went easy and turned her head to see him, above her wrists facing one another now in the custody of his hands. Follow me, I'll show you, he whispered fiercely in the half-light circulating around them. She did as he said and followed his dragging foot, which followed him down the stairs and back outside again into the night. There were distant voices and the sounds of dogs accompanying those voices, and she remembered the lamentations of the outlying area, and knew all the sadness and crying had transformed into incensed fury, trailblazing with torches toward the town, to wake the people and gather a hunting party to avenge the crime. She took a deep breath and followed the man with the lame foot across the narrow streets and between city walls and through a schoolyard with fading chalk marks all across the pavement, then into a copse of wood where life got darker and darker and the insects chirped louder. The breeze died away and all was very still and she could hear only the man's foot dragging behind him and loose change in his pockets. Then finally he stopped and she stopped abruptly and didn't move. Here, they are here. She looked around and saw nothing, not even a clearing. Cheat, she thought. Now I will learn what you really want. And she was fully confident he would get nothing, for she could outrun him, the fool. <laughs>